Welcome to another edition of How to Build Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef, and I'm thrilled you're here. I know you're going to get a ton of value from the gentleman we're interviewing today. His name is Jarek Robbins, and I'm sure you'll recognize that last name because he's the son of my greatest mentor, Tony Robbins. And I will tell you, Jarek is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, at 23 years old, Jarek was awarded the Congressional Award from the United States Congress. Uh, he's done tons of trainings. He's trained with the, you know, trained the United States Marine Corps, the Air Force, BMW, Remax, even the U.S. Olympic team. Uh, he's a, he's a trusted advisor and board member on several companies. Um, he's been doing performance, performance coaching for, for over 10 years. Um, so we're very, very lucky to have him today. Jarek, I'm thrilled you're here, buddy. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So performance coaching, uh, maximizing performance. You know, a lot of my listeners are uh, aspiring real estate investors. They want to take action. They want to perform. You know, uh, what what can you tell them? Sure. So I'd start with this. Um, and I'd ask you, since you know the industry and you know their lifestyles, what's the number one thing that holds them back? I mean, they well, learn what to do. They go learn the skills. They get the knowledge. They get the information. And, and I'd be curious how many people immediately go out, apply it and, you know, buy a handful of properties and make it work and make the money. And how many just sit there and think, well, ah, oh, yeah, I guess someday I'll get to this. Well, regretfully, I think it's more of the latter. And uh, sorry, guys, but I'm, I'm just calling it like it is. I mean, I know that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it can be a fearful place to take action. And, I, and I'm hoping that we can address that today because uh, yep. I know that if, they, if, they, if the people that are listening will take action, they'll be very glad they did. So yeah. let's talk. And, and so if we were to start there. What's the reason they say, like, why, what are the, they might be a handful, or, but what stories have you heard when you ask someone like, hey, you went to this course, you learned the information, what'd you do with it? And they go, well, nothing yet, because what's their story? What do they well, normally say? I think, you know, I have to read between the lines. You know, I've taken over a hundred calls from my listeners. And if I read between the lines, I would say it's fear. Hmm. Um, you know, it's, 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 uh, and, 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 you know, I know fear can be dissected a number of ways, but I, sure. I, I think that that the, the underlying theme is just a, it's a fear of taking action. They get caught in analysis paralysis sometimes. Sometimes they, you know, uh, that they taking that first step, you know, uh, it's it's it can be a challenge. So yep. now I, I'd say there's also another challenge that I've seen specifically in clients who have been in the position where they are doing real estate investment. Um, it is sometimes in the beginning, it's so exciting and it's so fun and like, dang, I can make passive income and they right. start doing it. And in the beginning, like their first thousand bucks a month, oh my gosh, this is cool. I don't even have to work and I get my thousand bucks. Pretty soon it's 20,000, 40,000, 50,000. And then it's like, well, you know, do I really want to have to go through all that effort again just to get an extra couple thousand dollars on top of my 50 I already have every month? I mean, hmm. do I really need it? Is it really, is it worth it? I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, that's a headache. I could just go lie by the pool all month. I don't want to have to deal with all the paperwork and all the talking and stuff. <laughs> I've fallen into that trap myself, but I, oh. I'd, I'd rather we gave value to the people that besides me. Oh. But yeah, so so there's both sides of this story. I want to make sure we point that out in the beginning because we're going to talk about both. Okay. Um, and, and there's some tips of how to handle both. First, the side that learns it all and then freaks out, and whether you call it fear or anxiety or uncertainty or not not sure what to do or analysis paralysis, I don't care what you call it. Um, the, the tricky part is. According to, if we look at neurologists and biologists, they look at the body and, and they look at what's the fundamental factors going on in our body when these things are taking place. Last weekend, I happened to be in New York City and I had a meeting with a lady who's a psychologist and therapist, but she focuses specifically on performance. In her office the week before was a very, very, very famous NFL coach. We will not say the name of this gentleman, but he was there for anger management. How do you calm down? And his request was, hey, I don't want to be an ice cube. Like I still need to be powerful and strong and intense. But obviously, according to the management that I work for, I'm a little too intense. <laughs> So he's like, how do I calm myself down? Which this is what happened. And here's how she explained it to me and why it's important to listeners here. She says the average person, let's say there's tense or stress levels are from zero to 10. And what happens is something starts to go wrong or they start to think about investing or something going on. And it goes, you know, level one stress, two, three, four, five. And somewhere around eight, they start to go, whoa, okay, I'm getting stressed out. 
I need to take a walk. I need to go breathe. I need to focus on my goals or do something to calm myself down. Right. And usually for the average person, they can calm themselves down. They walk outside, take a couple of breaths, think about their family, and all of a sudden they drop down to a five and they're, oh, I can think straight again. Okay, I'm good. Now for some people, and mostly the people who don't take action, this is really important because what happens is they go one, two, three, five, six, eight, ten, and somewhere around 10, they say this phrase, I lost control. And what that means is it went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ah, a hundred. Okay. No, that makes sense. Okay. And at a hundred, your heart's racing, your palms are sweaty. We call this a panic attack. Right. You can't think straight. You're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Excuse the language, but but that's what you're thinking. Um, you're like, dang, do I do it? Do I not do it? Do I do it? Do I not do it? You you, you literally lose the executive function of your brain, meaning the the prefrontal cortex of your brain is no longer working. Right. You are now in pure reaction. Now, the reason this happens, if we go all the way back in history, is because we would normally freak out like this if a saber-toothed freaking tiger jumped out from a bush behind us and went, rawr, we go, ah, right. and level 100 kicks in, and you either run like hell or fight like hell to survive. Sure. <laughs> the problem is that's the bi biological and neurological reaction that's happening to someone who's just thinking about investing in a deal, and specifically their first deal. And what happens is they go, what if I mess up? What if it doesn't come out? What if I lose the money? What if, what if, what if, what if? And they go, blah, and freak out. And so there's two ways we handle this right now at this point in history. One, we go see a psychiatrist, and they give us a magic freaking pill that's supposed to numb us from ever feeling this level 100. Eh. Eh, that doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't help. Right. Um, now, for some people, certain circumstances, very, 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 very rare, it might be the right option. For other people, probably not going to be the best option. So the other thing people try to do is your best friend or wife or husband or someone stands next to you and goes, it's okay, honey, calm down. It's okay, calm down. Just breathe, just calm down. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've ever seen someone have a true panic attack and freak out, telling them to calm down doesn't help anything. Right, right. <laughs> It freaks them out more. They're like, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, so here's what's interesting. She said, the way to take control of this isn't trying to limit or block or numb the fight or flight mechanism of your body. Instead, it's figuring out how do you strengthen something called rest and digest, which is the other part of your nervous system. I'm keeping this real simple for everybody. Sure. It's called your peripheral or, or you know, so, so let's just say rest and digest or fight or flight. Fight or flight is freaking out. Rest and digest is exactly what it sounds like. How do we get you to completely calm down and relax your nervous system enough that you can actually rest and you allow your body to refuel itself? And be now, able to think logically so you can take action. So There you go. So how and do they do that? How you do that. So in that case, she does it through breathing. Hmm. She has a little biofeedback machine that has a little dot that goes up and down on the screen. And she has people plug in to get your heart rate, your body temperature, and your pulse. Uh, or I'm sorry, your heart rate, your body temperature, and your breathing. And she has all three line up. And then she gets you to control your breathing. And on week one, she teaches you how to do calm breathing. And she has a little affirmation like, I am calm, I am calm, stuff like that. Okay. And then on week two, she does focused breathing. On week three, she does excited breathing. On week four, she does calm breathing again. And she has a 10 week program, it's like $4,000, uh, plus you have to buy the equipment, so like six grand all together. And over 10 weeks, she teaches you how to completely and radically control how you feel based on your breathing and hmm. your heart and her, and her experience and understanding the heart controls all the chemicals of your body and therefore if you can control your heart rate through breathing and your body temperature you can control the chemicals in your brain and body it's awesome okay now for most people listening they're not like hey sign me up find me to freaking new york and let me pay six grand to figure right. out who this lady is so let me save you a trip there's another company called spire they produce this little hundred dollar gadget goes on like hundred and something bucks goes on your belt clip and what it does is it measures your breathing all day long it tells you if you're tense calm or focused just based on the ratio and the style of breathing. And it catches it all day. Very Plus, cool. Is that S-P-I-R-E? S-P-I-R-E dot I-O is okay. their website. Okay. I was talking to the gentleman who created it because I'm using it with all my personal clients for performance. If we're going to get you to perform at your best, we have to know how you're already performing and we have to know how ideally you want to perform. 
the best way we can track it is by tracking your breathing every day. Because if you're going into your deal and all of a sudden you notice as you sit down to file the paperwork or fill out the stuff or do any part of it, if you notice you go into straight tense, which is also known as fear, anxiety, analysis, paralysis, whatever word you want to use, all you have to do is change your breathing and instantaneously we can get you back to focused and or calm, which allows you to get back to the executive function of your brain. Hmm. So really simple little tool. It'll save you about six grand in having to see this lady. If you oh, really want to go cool. see her, you can. Uh, she's in New York City. She's awesome. Uh, but you could also just plug in, get the little belt clip, and be using this every day to measure your breathing and track how well you're actually managing your state or emotions throughout the day. Now, here's the other factor that happens when someone's struggling with fear or analysis process, wherever it is. Usually, it's not like their mind is this beautiful garden with little birds chirping and it's this beautiful space of calm. Usually what happens is all of a sudden they start thinking. Then they start thinking more thoughts and then they start thinking the what if thoughts and then they start thinking and then all of a sudden their thinking takes off and you know Captain Mo kicks in momentum and all of a sudden it's what if it works, what if it doesn't, what if this, what if that, what if I lose, what if I win, I don't know. Huh? And their mind just goes nuts like a freaking tornado. And if you've ever been in a situation like that, it's very hard to stay focused when your mind's all over the place. So there's another little device we use with a lot of our clients. Again, you can go buy the neurofeedback machines that professional doctors and neurologists use. These things are like anywhere between five to fifty thousand dollars. Or there's a fun little company called Muse, M-U-S-E. Their website is choosemuse.com. They're up in Toronto. They created this really, really simple EEG, which measures your basic level brain waves and your heart rate. And you can throw it on each morning and they have you practice for anywhere between thir- three to 25 or 30 minutes of meditation. And what it does is it gives you simple biofeedback. Biofeedback is it's listening to how well you're able to completely clear and quiet your mind and keep your heart rate down. So when you start thinking thoughts, even if it's like one, two, three of breathing in, which a lot of meditative people tell you, count your breaths. So I thought I was great at meditation. I started counting my breaths and all of a sudden it gives you feedback. In this case, it gives you noise feedback. It becomes very quiet and serene in whatever landscape you pick, the beach, the city, the rainforest, wherever you choose to listen to, it puts a little background noise and it becomes very quiet and serene when you have clear thoughts and zero thoughts in your mind, you have no noise. If anything, you get rewarded with these little birds chirping. Now, as soon as you start to have a lot of thoughts or mental function or your heart rate spikes up for some reason, all of a sudden it it turns into this like noise and wind and then it turns into thunderstorms and lightning and craziness as a representation to give you feedback that, hey, your mind is being flooded with thoughts right now. Hmm. And all you have to do is clear your mind, take a breath, let all the thoughts go, and it goes right back to little tweety birds and really calm, serene environment. So what we're doing with both of these gadgets is one, we're training your breathing, which helps get you back down in the rest and digest. Two, we're training the ability that when your mind gets flooded with fearful thoughts, uncertain thoughts, crazy thoughts, whatever thoughts, it gives you the ability that with one big breath and just clearing your thoughts, you practice like a muscle getting back into this place with total clarity of mind, total relaxed and centered, and if not focused state of breathing, And now you can function back at your best. Hey, guys, what he just said is really important about practicing it like a muscle. And and, and that that absolutely applies here. And and frankly, it also applies to building uh, your stress muscle. And, and, you know, it's it's it you you hear these things called a muscle and they really are. So uh, what he's talking about here is building up your, you know, your ability to calm yourself uh, and 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 that that is like building a muscle. So this is this is great stuff, Jarek. And so what yeah. the lady up in New York was telling me is most people try to train themselves to either calm down or relax, um, or pill it until it numbs it. But what they don't train is they don't train their rest and digest muscle. And you you said it spot on. It is a muscle. Right. And you have to make it strong. So most people are incredibly weak at clearing their mind and controlling their breathing to get their heart rate down and calming themselves. Now, give you a wild thought. I happen to also be living over in Sausalito for the last six weeks. um, Cool, love it. This summer, beautiful over there, just outside of San Francisco. And I happen to have dinner with the guy who runs the neuroscience lab at uh, Stanford. And so I was chatting with him and I was asking him, what's the newest, best, craziest stuff you guys are finding? And he said, actually, right now we're working on super performance. He's the one who introduced me to the Spire concept, the little breathing okay. belt thing. And, and I was talking to him. I said, well, what have you learned? 
And he says, we found where humans perform at their best. It's called, they call it super performance. And he says, there's an interesting correlation that doesn't normally exist. And I said, interesting. I said, what is it? And they said, we found when adrenaline goes up and stress levels go down at the exact same time, people go into a state called super performance or completely focused. Other people call this flow. And I said, okay, how, well, how the heck do you do that? And he goes, what the weird part is normally they're correlated. So normally when stress goes up, fight or flight kicks off, which causes adrenaline to pump into your body. Right, right, sure. So that's, he says that's normally primal. they're right. correlated. And I said, well, how the heck do you uncorrelate them? <laughs> right. And he's like, that's what we're finding out. And I said, okay, well, do you have any clues? And he said, there's this crazy guy named Wim Hof. And I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy. No. Um, he, he, he ran a, so he's able, through his breath, he's able to control his heart rate, his body temperature, and his, um, uh, what is it? Not his digestion, his, his body's ability to heal itself, basically. Wow. Wh which most people say, oh, yeah, right. You know, one of those quacky, weird people again. But they verified him in all kinds of labs and science, you know, science labs all over the world. They plugged him in and, and proven, like he says, I'm going to send blood to my hand. And then he takes a breath and focuses. And all of a sudden they measure his blood flow and they watch that all this blood just flows into his hand. And they're like, wow. And he has all these crazy Guinness book world records. He swims under icebergs in just a pair of shorts and, and that's it. Wow. <laughs> he ran a barefoot marathon in the Arctic in the complete snow and freezing while keeping his body temperature up. He holds the world record. Um, for submerging himself in ice water and holding himself the longest without hurting his body in any way, shape, or form. He's literally been able, like those monks that you see, the Tibetan monks who sit you know, in just a loincloth out in the snow and they're just steaming, right. he's been able to reproduce that in his own body and, and control it. How he controls it, again, is through his breath, and his breath controls his heart, and his heart controls everything else. And so by doing this, he figured out this you know, really crazy breathing techniques that cause... It's kind of like hyperventilating and then holding your breath out and then holding one big breath in. And because of the deep breathing he's doing, it causes stress levels to go down. But because of the way he's doing it, it kicks off adrenaline to kick in. And so he literally has the ability to get you into a state of super performance just through breathing. So one more time, uh, you, you, you said it and I didn't quite capture it. So adrenaline goes up and what goes down? Stress. Stress goes down. Wow. Yeah, because stress is what causes it not to be sustainable. And so do you think these, these devices that you talked about, this uh, spire and this... Uh, these cause stress to go down. So yeah, so if you can, if you can master that while you're, you know, your adrenaline increases for whatever reason, uh, mm -hmm. then, you, then you achieve this flow or super performance state. Yeah, so you're tapping into this state called super performance. And this, this isn't me coming up with this stuff. This is right. you know, Stanford Neuroscience. Uh, you know, people over at Harvard, like you're mixing this stuff together and it's like, wow, holy smokes, look at this. So, oh. so this is for the people who are stuck, not applying themselves. Check out Wim Hof, uh, check out Spire, check out, you know, Muse and, and use those as a combination of tools. Uh, I always suggest get a coach just because sure. you could buy all the tools. And again, th you know, shelf help, you throw it on the shelf and stare at it and do nothing with it. <laughs> sure. So get someone to hold you accountable and be like, use that stuff. And you know, how'd you do? How are you going to get better when are you are practicing? Just simple stuff to get you to do it like any great coach would. Um, right. but so that's one side. The other side is those people who got straight up bored and I know they're out there. Can, can I, I stop you for one second? Go for it. So let, 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 before we go over to there, um, let's, let's say I'm thinking about real estate. I've read all the books and I just haven't taken action. Yep. And, you know, what would you tell that person? What would you, or what would, how would you coach that person? Let's, let's say, you know, it's fear, but you know, is there anything, I mean, you've given some great stuff here, but is just in a, in, in a phrase, what would you tell that person? Sure. Um, I, I'd start really simple. I, I'd have them first sit down and figure out what their vision is. Okay. What do they really, 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 really want? Ultimately okay. look down into the future okay. and, and say, okay, out in the future, what do you ultimately, ultimately, ultimately want to achieve? Okay. And we need to get really associated to that so you feel it in your body and you're like, dang, that would be amazing. You need to see it, hear it, feel it, experience it in your mind as if it's real. I mean, okay. nowadays with virtual reality, you know, I build out a virtual version of it in your virtual reality, click it on and go walk, take a walk around and wherever you're going to be in the future. Well, that's experience. a cool idea. I hadn't even thought of that. That's a great yeah. idea. Okay. It's, it's coming. It's coming. Wow. 
just not there yet, but it'll be here soon. Right. Um, and that thought, build out your future vision and world of what you want and go stand in it every day for 20 minutes, walk around so you can experience what it's going to be like and really viscerally get it in your body. From there, uh, you need to really identify what it is that is slowing you or keeping you from taking action. Is it a story? Is it a fear? Is it unknown? Is it, is it momentum just not, not turned on yet? What is it? And what we need you to do is make a decision. And that decision is, hey, today is the day I'm no longer going to allow that to stand in my way. And you literally have to draw a line in the sand and say, not another day, not another moment. I'm not going to let, let it stop me or slow me down anymore. I love it. And you, and you got to think, what decisions have been made that literally changed history? I'm sure you've heard of a lady named, uh, you know, Rosa Parks. Sure. <laughs> One sure. decision. Sure. One decision changed history for millions and millions and millions of people here in the U.S., yeah, guys, you just have to say enough is enough. Okay, I don't like I don't like the life that I'm living now. I want more. Associate with the ideal vision, like Jarek is talking about, and 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 and, get, and like he said, envision it daily with gratitude if, that you're there, and that's that's how you materialize this stuff. So, yeah. good stuff. Good and and stuff. so there, there's a couple more steps. One, okay. make the decision. So Rosa Parks, Gandhi, um, Martin Luther King Jr., all these people. They've all made a decision, one single decision that absolutely transforms history for the world to some extent. And, and today could be your, your moment to make that decision to transform your world from this point on. And so you got to make the decision, draw a line and say, and say not another day, not another moment, I'm, I'm doing it. From there, you got to make a true commitment. Now, I always tease people because I'm only 32 years old. And to say for me to stand up in front of you and tell you what commitment is, so for those younger than me, maybe I have a little bit of understanding, but for those older than me, you'd all roll your eyes and be like, please, you're young. You don't know what commitment is yet. I said, okay, great. So I always look to someone called John Wooden, um, most winningest basketball coach of all times. There's a beautiful video made about him by ESPN. If you Google Wooden, John Wooden love notes, bring up this video, watch the video and learn about commitment. It's beautiful. Now, take that example of commitment and bring it into your own life and say, what would happen if I decided to be that committed to this decision I've just made right now? Now, from there, the final part is you got to get momentum on your side. And the way you get momentum on your side is by literally writing down one action, one small action, and one big action you're going to take immediately. So you got to do something immediately to show that your brain, like, hey, I mean it and I'm doing something about it. And so if someone's really stuck, number one, you got to associate to your vision. Number two, you got to figure out what story or what belief or what thought or what action or whatever is holding you back and decide to no longer let it stand in your way. Number two, you got to, three, you got to absolutely commit to it. Uh, watch that John Wooden Love Letters video. And number four, you got to take a small and big action immediately to show your brain that you mean it and get some momentum on your side. Great stuff, buddy. Great stuff. Okay, so now let's say you're Rod Cleef and you've gotten lazy, and uh, let, let's 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 see what you do there. Yeah. So, <laughs> and and here's the thing. There's a lady named Angela Duckworth. I don't know if you've heard about her. She wrote a book called Grit, and Grit is basically a combination of perseverance and passion for very 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 long term goals. So she went and studied people at West Point. Uh, little kids in the, the worldwide spelling bee. If you've ever seen those kids, poor kids, they pass out and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good Lord, yeah. But all these really intense situations. She went and studied what are the key factors of someone who makes it and someone who quits, gives up, fails, or falls apart. And after race, background, gender, nationality, language, all these factors she tried to correlate and figure out, the number one factor that stood the test of time through all the situations was something she termed grit. Now, grit, again, is passion and perseverance for long-term consistent goals. It's about stamina. How are you consistently working your way through hard situations again and again and again and again and again and again and again? And she said there's four psychological assets that help you grow grit, but also that cause you to fall apart and quit. So number one is people saying, I'm bored. Hmm. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard this from anyone. Sure. But they, they get to a point where they're doing it again and 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 again. And eventually they say, I'm kind of bored doing the same thing again and again and again. She mm -hmm. says, the psychological asset and the way you need to get grit from this is the opposite of boredom in her stance here is interest. So she's, she asks, proposes the question, what has to happen to fall in love with the process of what you're doing? Hmm. She goes, if you love the process of what you're doing, 
you're going to find a way to continue to do it because you actually love the process. You get a natural emotional, physical, mental high. Serotonin and dopamine kick in because you love the process. You enjoy doing it. Yeah, you guys, you've heard me say a million times, uh, associate pleasure with multifamily real estate because you've got to love it to get through what Jarek's talking about right here. So good stuff. Keep there going, you go. buddy. Keep Number going. two, they say the effort isn't worth it anymore. That's what I was hinting at before. In the beginning, to make that thousand bucks a month, it was worth it. Right. Now you got a hundred grand a month coming in. You're like, I don't know if it's worth an extra thousand a month. Big freaking deal. It's not worth it anymore. And she goes, at this point, what happened was people are only looking at the end result and they're not paying attention to trying to get better themselves at the process. So I remember a long time ago. I was at one of dad's houses and I walked downstairs and I saw this VHS tape and I was like, what the heck is that? First off, why is there a VHS tape here? <laughs> right. So I picked it up, threw it in the recorder, see what it was. And it was a video of him telling a story on stage. And he's been telling this story for at that point in history, probably like 30 years. Okay. And I remember thinking, what the heck is a video of him telling that story doing here? And I asked him, I said, Hey dad, why is this video here? And he said, Oh, I was trying to see if I could get better at telling that story 30 years of telling the same freaking story. I was trying to get better at telling the story. So I had the team pull this time that I sold it really well and, and send it out to me so I could review it to see how I could get better at telling that one story. Repetition is the mother of skill. After 30 years of telling the same freaking story. Yeah, say now that's, that's, that's an extreme example of that second point that she's bringing up. So the second, to, yeah. second point is the effort isn't worth it versus... I'm practicing deliberately to get better at my craft. Yeah. And I'm looking for my weakest point and purposely choosing the hardest part purely for the joy and the sake of improvement in my own nervous system to to get better. Yeah, and guys, goes, this 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 doesn't just apply to real estate. This applies to anything that you do in your life. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Okay, sorry, Jerk. So, so two is practicing with the pure intent of deliberately getting better, finding your weak point and purposefully going after it and pushing yourself through the hard times to get better at it purely for the purpose of getting better. Three, people say, it's not important to me anymore. It used to be, but now it's not. My values have changed. She goes, at that case, all they're missing is purpose. Because if you had a meaning, a reason bigger than yourself to be fighting for, it would no longer not be important because that meaning is so important to you the vehicle to help you accomplish it will always be valued because it's helping you do that very important piece in your life. It's helping you create wealth for your family. It's helping you take care of the ones you love. It's helping create freedom for the ones you care about. It's helping you build that next school or hospital or whatever you do with your money. But it's helping you do that. Therefore, it'll always be valuable. So this next piece, when people say it's not important to me, all that means is they've lost connection with their purpose or meaning or reason that's bigger than themselves to be fighting for. Hmm. Number four, they say, I've tried, I failed, I can't do this, I might as well just give up and walk away now. And that happens. Hate to say it, but a lot of you are going to go out for your very first time and you're going to run face first into a brick freaking wall. Uh, <laughs> trust me, it happens. And it's if you've, part you've got, of it. You've got to have a strong enough vision to either go around that wall, bust through it the second time, or go over it, whatever, but, but uh, you've yep. got to have the vision. But anyway, I'm interrupting and you, please. So what she says, the final piece here, you have to have hope or faith, and not a religious faith, but this faith that it will eventually turn out the way I want it to be, and this is important, if I always keep trying to improve and always keep putting in the effort. Now, that goes over to a lady named Carol Dweck from Stanford who figured something else called growth mindset. If you're not familiar with this, you definitely need to pick up the book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. She's from Stanford. She figured out the correlation, corollary factors of people who succeed and fail in everything, business, relationship, health, finance, everywhere. And she said the number one factor they figured out from Stanford research is something she calls growth mindset. Growth mindset says, if I fail, all I have to do is stand up, learn, apply myself and continue moving forward and I will eventually succeed. Now, my dad's taught this thing called the ultimate success formula for decades. And this is a representation of that from a scientific standpoint. It's saying, hey, if you know what your outcome is, know why it's a must to achieve, come up with a plan of action, take massive, crazy amounts of action. From there, measure your results. 
fine tune them and update them. Go back to the beginning and apply again. Know why it's a must, Take, get a plan, take crazy amounts of action, repeat until you get the result. And at that point, celebrate. <laughs> That's right. And guys, guys, the way that applies itself is when you hit that brick wall, then you, then you, then you go through that process again. What are the steps one more time? Number one, you got to know your outcome. Got to know your outcome. Know what you want. Know what the vision is. Know why you're doing it. Number two, with know- With clarity, what- with clarity and, 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 and yep. emotion. Okay, sorry. Number two, know why you're doing it. This is yep. the purpose piece we talked about. Deep, right. profound purpose. Some reason that's bigger than just you. Right. Or your pocketbook or your bank account. Right. Now, when you get that, now you got to have a plan. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, to this extent, that's why you take these courses. That's why you go to these places because you need a plan of action. You need to know what the heck to do. But guys, the first two are the most important because the plan can change if you hit that brick wall. But yeah. the first two don't change. The outcome and the why don't change. The yeah. plan or the or the or the vehicle could change. Yeah. And what was the last one? So from there, once you know what to do, you got to take massive, massive amounts of action. Right. Now, a good friend of mine who I've grown up with always tells me what's silly is a lot of people say, I took massive action. It's like, well, what'd you do? Well, I went online for 20 minutes and tried to find a deal and I couldn't find one. So uh, that's that. Right. Right. <laughs> I hope you guys are listening. Massive, that's action, not massive is not, action is not action. Yeah, that's not massive action. No. Come on. Massive action would be print out a flyer that says, hey, I'm interested in buying your home. Print out 20,000 copies and walk around your neighborhood and put it in every single person's mailbox. Like that's massive action. That's massive action. Like I, when I started, guys, I knocked on doors every single night for a decade, which is how I bought 500 houses in Denver. That's massive action. And that's what, yeah. you know, and you don't have to do it to that degree, but massive action is just that massive action. Not not a, not a you know, a, a, an effort, a small effort. Uh, and so just be real with yourself. That's the key here. Be real with yourself when you sit and analyze you associated with these methodologies, because that's how you're going to, to get momentum and move forward. Yeah. The awesome. next step from there is, is really, truly measuring your, your performance. You right. got to measure. That's why we use Spire. That's why we use Muse. That's why we use Fitbit. You know, Fitbit measures your weight, your movement, your sleep, your nutrition, your hydration. We, we measure these things. My thought is, as a coach, I need to know what your data is. <laughs> right. How many steps are you taking? What are you feeding your mind? What are you doing with your time? We have all kinds of gadgets and gizmos and apps and trackers we use so that I know everything that's going on in your world. Because if I know all the details and metrics, I can help you make them better. Now, in, back in the past, how we did this was very you know, situational and, and individual feedback based. So how'd you do? And you go, pretty good. And I go, okay, great. Uh, nowadays, I can strap a bracelet on your wrist and I can know your heart rate and how your heart rate fluctuated all day long. Right. And I can have it bounce over to my computer as your coach and I can watch. Now, the breathing one doesn't have it yet, but I'm working with the guy who created the company because I want to get a dashboard as your coach that I can throw up on my screen and I can watch your breathing all day. And I know when you just got tense and I can send you a text message and say, hey, take a breath, bro. Calm down. Oh, I love it. <laughs> love it. Like I want that kind and of stuff. Real time, real time. <laughs> Uh, real time action on uh, on a on a situation. Love exactly, because if you go to basic psychology to have a change in behavior, you need to give immediate feedback to when it's happening, and that's been the biggest challenge in coaching right now. Unless we're in the same place and I'm there with you, it's very difficult to close the feedback loop to give you enough information quickly enough for you to adjust your behavior. Nowadays. Oh boy, it's getting close and I'm excited. I'm working with some other companies on creating aggregation apps so we can aggregate all this content to one location so that I'm able to track all you at once and really give you consistent in the moment through the day feedback. Wow, I love it, love it. So that's what we're looking at on our side. Well, but you, you take this action, you get your feedback, you look at your results and you either A, celebrate like crazy because you, you have a victory and you won or B, you learn and go, dang, that's not what I wanted. How do I improve? And you come up with a new plan. You go back to massive action. You go back to work. You come back out, say, hey, how did that turn out? And, and I always relate in the coaching aspect of it when we work with clients, kind of like the Olympics. You tell me you want to become a gold medalist in the 400 meter dash. I say, great, get on the track and run. I'm going to time you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> now there's only one of three things that could happen. You're faster than the gold medalist. You're at the same pace or you're slower. Now, based on those three things, we know what we have to do. <laughs> right, right. And, and we just go to work. It's very easy. It's not that complicated. 
And so, you know, you tell me, I'm going to go buy 10 houses this week. Great. You go out into the world. I'll say, I'll time you. Go. You come back. You say, well, I got a half a house. I'm like, I didn't know you could get a half a house, but okay. Shit, that's not 10. What do we need to do? <laughs> right. Right. We update our strategy. We come up with a new plan. We got you got get you out there training, and when we get you to perform, and then that's the process. Um, and, and that thought for people, if, you, if you're looking at that, if you happen to be bored, you got to go back to grit. Fall in love with what you do. Practice deliberately to get better every single day. Find deep meaning and purpose in what you do, and have the faith that as long as you keep putting your best effort forth, keyword best effort forth. It's got to be your best, best effort for it. Eventually, it's going to lead to the results you really desire and deserve. Love it. Great stuff, buddy. Great stuff. So how do people get a hold of you, Jarek? Um, easiest way is probably Google me. Just type in Jarek, J-A-I-R-E-K, and then Robbins, R-O-B-B-I-N-S dot com. Uh, we have tons of different sites depending on what you're looking for. Okay. Uh, we have JarekRobbins.com, which is our personal development. We push out free content every single week. We have a podcast. Uh, learn it, live it, give it with Jarek uh, Robbins, me. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. You tune in our podcast up there, which is if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, we try to throw stuff up all the time. Um, we have a YouTube channel, jrctv.com. Just has great videos we post up every week. Um, where else? You can grab our book, learn it or live it, live it book.com. Uh, we have endorsements from Brian Tracy, Deepak Chopra, uh, Stuart Allison, who's a chief master sergeant in the U.S. Air Force, endorsing it. It's a great, great work there. Just a simple, easy way to get involved with what we do. Um, if you're someone who's in a leadership position and, and, and you believe that you are in a place to coach others or, or you have a team and you're trying to coach them to be a better version in your office, uh, you can check out performancecoachuniversity.com. That's where we train people in all the skills we have and, and how to do it for other people. Hmm. Uh, I guess that's how. Wow. All right. That's a lot. Well, listen, buddy, I really appreciate you being on the show. It's been a lot of fun. You added a ton of value and uh, I look forward to staying in touch with you. Same here. Thanks for having me. All right, bud. Take care. Bye now.